Hello, welcome to the Hertfordshire Climate Change and Sustainability Partnership training on the introduction to climate change for councillors and public sector teams. Please ensure that your sound is turned on or you have headphones connected throughout this e-learning module. By the end of this training, you'll have gained an understanding of the basic science of climate change and how climate change will affect us both globally and locally. You'll have gained an understanding of how a local authority and you as an elected member can mobilize change. And finally, you'll understand how local authorities in Hertfordshire are working to take action on climate change through HCCSP. There is no longer any debate about whether climate change is happening. The science is undisputable. Humans have changed the chemistry of the atmosphere through our dependence on fossil fuels such as oil, gas and coal for transport, energy, heating, manufacture and agriculture. This is raising the global temperature at an unprecedented rate and affecting weather patterns, crops and water supplies. This is already instigating conflict and political instability in parts of the world. This training will present some of the facts and the impacts of climate change, as well as what we as individuals and as local authorities need to do now to minimise the impacts. Hertfordshire councils are working together to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We have committed to doing everything we can to get county-wide greenhouse gas emissions as close to net zero as possible by 2050, if not 2030, to limit the damaging and irreversible effects of global warming. We commit to addressing all other environmental issues, including nature, transport and water. But what are greenhouse gases and why are they such a problem? Before we start, a couple of quick definitions. Net zero means that any emissions added to the atmosphere are balanced by an equal amount of removal from the atmosphere. On balance, there should be no additional emissions of gases that lead to climate change. This means there should be no carbon dioxide being added to the atmosphere by humans and no additional warming. Net zero emissions is more realistic than a gross zero target, as it allows for some residual emissions from sectors where there is currently no feasible alternative to fossil fuels. People sometimes use the term carbon neutral but net zero is now more in use. Just to confirm that we're all in agreement about what we're talking about, sustainability is any activity which meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. To be absolutely clear, climate change or carbon reduction is just one aspect of sustainability. It's important when having discussions about eco or green or sustainability that you're clear with the audience that you're both talking about the same thing. So, what is climate change and where does carbon come into it? To understand climate change, we first need to understand the greenhouse effect and why greenhouse gases are important. The greenhouse effect is a naturally occurring phenomena that keeps our planet at the ideal temperature for life. As energy from the sun radiates down on the planet, some of the energy is reflected back out into space and some energy is trapped in the atmosphere. This flow of energy traps just enough heat in the atmosphere to allow life on Earth to exist. Some energy is reflected back and some stays in the atmosphere as heat. The energy is trapped in the atmosphere by the greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, N2O, methane, CH4, and others. This balance of gases in the atmosphere has kept the planet at a steady temperature that makes life as we know it sustainable for hundreds of thousands of years. Humans have altered this process in the very recent past by increasing the volume of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. When carbon-rich fuels are burned, such as petrol, diesel or coal for energy and transport, farming and food production, and through industrial processes, greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere at faster rates. This increase in greenhouse gases is causing more and more energy to be trapped in the atmosphere, 
You can think of the atmosphere as a blanket that's getting thicker and thicker as more greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere. As more energy gets trapped, the atmosphere heats up. This is called global warming. As that atmosphere heats up, there are impacts on how some global weather systems work. Some areas will experience extreme increases in temperatures, others will be less marked. Some areas get more rain, others get less. These large scale changes in long established weather patterns are what is referred to as climate change. There are many different greenhouse gases which have different strengths and staying power in the atmosphere. To be able to compare them all, we use the measure of global warming potential or GWP. Carbon dioxide is the most abundant greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. It has a lifetime in the atmosphere of between 50 and 200 years and 77% of the atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide. We give this a warming potential of one. Other gases, like F gases towards the bottom of this chart, produced through industrial manufacturing of fridges and air conditioners, make up a very small concentration in the atmosphere, but have very, very strong warming ability and stay in the atmosphere for thousands of years. Look at perfluoromethane. This gas stays in the atmosphere for 50,000 years and is six and a half thousand times stronger than carbon dioxide. A small amount of these industrial chemicals have extraordinary effects. These F gases are used in refrigeration, air conditioning and cooling electricity cables, all of which are going to be more important as the planet warms and we move to electrical power in the future. So what activities release greenhouse gases? Carbon dioxide is released when we burn oil, burn coal, burn gas, and also in the production of cement and deforestation. Methane or CH4 is released with livestock and also organic waste when matter is breaking down in landfill. And finally, as this picture shows in any of the paddy fields of rice and rice production. Nitrous oxide is a result of farming processes released during fertilizing of crops. And as I mentioned earlier, F gases are released through aerosols, refrigeration and industrial processes. So how do we know that these gases are the cause of global warming? Surely temperatures just change on the planet and that's how life works. Of course, it's natural for Earth's temperature and the carbon dioxide levels to vary. Ice core data shows that it takes around a thousand years for the Earth's average surface temperature to rise by one degree centigrade in response to natural carbon dioxide variations. This chart shows the natural fluctuations of carbon dioxide from 800,000 BC. We have shifted the natural balance. We have raised carbon dioxide levels higher than they have been in 800,000 years. We've created a one degree centigrade average global temperature rise in just 170 years. The global average carbon dioxide set a new record high in 2021, 414 parts per million. Methane similarly has increased. Remember that that methane has a 21 times greater warming effect in the atmosphere. This chart shows the levels of parts per billion. Again, nitrous oxide has a warming effect in the atmosphere 300 times greater than carbon dioxide. Parts per billion of nitrous oxide are increasing as well. This shows a correlation between atmospheric carbon dioxide levels and the average global temperature. But as we burst through any historically known carbon dioxide level, it's becoming increasingly challenging to predict what impacts this could have on climate systems, on biodiversity, and on the survival of life as we know it. Feedback loops are already accelerating changes. 
such as at the polar regions where melting glaciers are creating black areas of ocean where previously there were white glaciers. These black areas are absorbing rather than reflecting the light, creating ever more warming. The nine years from 2013 through 2021 ranked among the 10 warmest years on record. This is being recorded a week after the hottest day in the UK since records began by at least two degrees. Scientists talk about keeping warming to one and a half degrees. That means global average temperatures being limited to just one and a half degrees over the average temperature of pre-industrialization. Carbon dioxide levels today are higher than at any point in human history. Averaged across land and ocean, the 2021 surface temperature was 0.8 degrees Celsius warmer than the 20th century average and one degree warmer than the pre-industrial period. Unfortunately, we've known about this science for over 100 years. Predicted levels of warming have now been realized and scientists are trying to understand different scenarios of what may happen in the next few years as our emissions are not reducing at the rate that we need them to. Short of an immediate and drastic plunge in carbon dioxide emissions, along with an unprecedented effort to suck carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere, we are almost certain to spiral past one and a half degrees centigrade. Without major changes in energy use, we'll likely push past two degrees centigrade, a threshold that policymakers have considered dangerous for human and animal kind, and sometime in the 21st century as well. Climate change has a direct and indirect impact on the world as we know it. The three direct impacts are increased global temperatures, variable rainfall and rising sea levels. Temperatures are rising due to increased heat being trapped in the atmosphere. Those rising temperatures in turn affect the amount and flow of moisture in the atmosphere, which causes changes in rainfall patterns. As temperatures rise, the oceans expand and more ice and snow melt, resulting in sea level rise. Linked to these direct impacts are indirect impacts, such as increased floods and droughts, changes to crop production affecting food and water resources, impacts on human well-being, impacts on biodiversity and nature, damage to coastal properties, an increased spread of diseases and health risks, which will be felt most by the vulnerable or marginalised communities, both within the UK and globally. So to look at these in a bit more detail, climate change is a critical issue that will affect all of us in the UK or at a global level. The economic losses from flooding in the winter of 2019 to 2020 are estimated to be about 333 million pounds. Nearly one in three business premises in the UK are at risk of flooding, and the average cost of flood damage to companies is around 82,000 pounds. Increasing demand for insurance of this type could render flood risk uninsurable. We've seen this recently with pandemic insurance no longer being viable for businesses. What are your flood defenses like? in the areas that you represent. Sea levels in the southeast of England will rise between 29 and 70 centimetres, possibly up to 115 centimetres by the end of the century, depending on emission scenarios. Inhabitants of low level islands are already being moved out because of sea inundation. This image shows a 2050 projection with sections of Lincolnshire and Cambridgeshire permanently underwater. There'll be larger and more frequent and extreme wildfires. In the high temperatures experienced in the UK last week in July 2022, fire crews received more calls than at any time since World War II, with fires damaging businesses, houses, schools and churches, as well as farm buildings, grasslands and crops. These fires, of course, release more carbon to the atmosphere. This is Lytton in Canada, which sits on the same meridian as the UK. In June 2021, a record-breaking heat wave affected North America. 
the heat dome settled over Lytton, breaking local temperature records by 4.6 degrees centigrade and setting a national temperature record of 49.6 degrees. The subsequent wildfires destroyed 90% of the town. And one year later, most of the inhabitants have not been able to return. In July 2022, Luton Airport closed due to temperature pressures impacting its runway. Thameslink suspended all routes through Hertfordshire due to sustained high temperatures. In many global regions, agricultural land is turning to desert, killing crops and grazing animals. This leads to mass migration as people are unable to produce food for themselves. This in turn leads to conflict. In 2015, 175 million people were exposed to heat waves globally. This number is increasing. Migration. People are forced to leave their homes due to drought, agricultural collapse, lack of food and localized conflicts over resources. Some estimate that 1 billion people will be forced to migrate by 2050 due to the impacts of climate change. It has been well documented that climate justice will come to the fore over the coming decades as resources become more scarce and marginalized communities bear the brunt of the impacts of climate change. Where will these people go and who will look after them and provide them with new lives? This displacement of people and the need for resources acts as a threat multiplier for conflict. Climate change is linked to the initial triggers for conflict in places like Syria, Darfur and Somalia through the initial decline in agriculture and the movement of people to cities. Coupling this with the cost of living crisis could create further vulnerabilities, encouraging individuals into extreme political actions or crime. There may be those that feel that climate change is not a prescient issue, or it's something that happens to people far away or will happen a long way in the future. Unfortunately, as we have seen in July 2022 and previously, this is simply not the case. It's easy to be dismissive of those who aren't as engaged in climate change or sustainability. And so it's important to have the facts to hand to help audiences understand what they can do and how important it is to trust the science. There are those that feel that it's not their problem and there's nothing they can do about it. However, between 40 and 70% of emissions arise from personal choice decisions about transport, energy use and consumption. Individuals do have powerful choices that they can make to help impact their own carbon footprints. Other countries need to do their bit? Perhaps, but China emits less per capita emissions than the UK, as the majority of their emissions are created through the manufacture of goods that are sent to the West. Our consumption is a core root of the problem. And as we began the Industrial Revolution over 150 years ago, it is our responsibility to help others out of poverty while redressing our industrialization habits of the past. There's an idea that they'll be looking forward to warmer summers, and we've had hot summers like this before. We may be enjoying more moderate temperatures in the UK, but will also be affected by more extreme and frequent rain, snow and storm events which will in turn disrupt food supplies and increase immigration. Any comparisons to previous heat waves in previous centuries can be dispelled by a comparison of global maps demonstrating average global temperatures that have changed catastrophically since the 1970s. The climate has always changed. This is true, but the current rate of change is unprecedented in the history of human civilization. Each degree of warming in the past took around a thousand years. We have already raised the Earth's temperature by one degree in a hundred years. One other point to note, the climate has often changed on the planet. However, the human race could easily become extinct and go the way of the dinosaurs. Fluctuations in temperature do not mean that the planet is at risk. The planet will be fine. It is humankind and nature and life as we know it that we are discussing now. Those that feel that bigger issues like war and poverty should take precedent. 
Climate change compounds and exacerbates other issues and are the cause of many conflicts in the world today. If you discuss any issue that's important to any individual, chocolate, coffee, Saturday football clubs, all of them are at risk due to the impacts of climate change. Chocolate and coffee crops are likely to fail more frequently due to the impacts of deforestation and irregular weather cycles. Flash flooding could cancel up to a third of Saturday football matches if local pitches are waterlogged. Whatever you're interested in, there is a conversation that roots back to climate change. Any questions around the science can be debunked. There are no scientists doubting human activity as the cause of global warming. 928 peer reviewed articles in the last 10 years concur. And that final point, it's okay, I recycle. Hertfordshire enjoys very positive recycling rates in some of its districts and boroughs. And although this is important, and it is important to pursue, it's also important to understand proportionality. 229 people need to recycle correctly to save the same amount of carbon as one person installing solar panels. Long distance travel, poorly insulated homes and investing in fossil fuels through pensions, mortgages and savings emit significantly more than waste management. Recycling is important, but routing discussions back to carbon emissions is also key to understand what people and authorities can do. Let's make sure we never find ourselves in this position. On to the more positives, what we can do, what we are doing, and how we can move forward. Within the national policy context, there is considerable action in the political sphere since the Climate Change Act was introduced in 2008. In 2021, the Environment Act codified into UK law the previously EU-based rules on nature protection, water quality, clean air, and other environmental protections. However, the Climate Change Committee has stated in summer 2022 that the policies and programmes are lagging behind delivering on ambition needed to reach 2050 goals. In 2021, the Climate Change Committee commended the government for setting ambitious targets and launching a new net zero strategy during COP26. Policies are now in place for most sectors of the economy, but a thorough review of progress finds scant evidence of delivery against these headline goals so far. There are benefits at an individual, community, region, national and international level to climate change. Rapid changes are needed in every sphere of every individual's public and private life. The challenge will require all of us to fundamentally change how we live and operate. Local authorities are extremely well placed to facilitate, leverage, encourage and require these changes. Indeed, local authorities are able to impact and influence more than their budgets and scale may imply. Their spheres of influence are great across all the scopes. This idea of scopes comes up very often when discussing climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. This diagram shows a basic scopes diagram, which is thinking about who and what controls and influences greenhouse gas emissions through your organisation. This can be thought of as what you control, what you indirectly control, and what you could influence. For businesses, this would be in the creation of your product and then in its use and then its disposal. For councils, this is for the delivery and then use of your services, buildings and events or activity, and even by extension, the operation and running of your whole local authority area, be that a district, a borough or a county. Scope one is the energy that you directly buy. Scope two would be the energy that is purchased by your contractors. Scope three would be the energy created by the use and 
influence of your products. With coordinated action in the wider community, local authorities are extremely well placed to galvanise real change. Although only 2% of UK emissions are under direct local authority control, 33% of emissions are under the influence of local authorities. Think through different headings. In the economy, how will your area be affected by climate change? How can the council work to support businesses to be better prepared? What skills and training will be needed to deliver these responses? In housing and planning, what policies are in place to ensure new developments are low carbon, to encourage renewable energy generation, to retrofit existing buildings, to ensure new developments are resilient to the impacts and effects of climate. Environment and transport sees an opportunity to use the planning system to promote both green and blue infrastructure to improve resilience and offsetting. And also to consider how we move populations on a modal shift promoting cycling and walking, also known as active travel, and public transport up the hierarchy and away from the private domestic car. Councillors have a range of levers in their gift to realise the benefits and opportunities of climate action in Hertfordshire. Councils can think about direct emissions of buildings and staff, how you commission work and what you procure. Engage with the officers in your portfolio or ward to understand what action is being taken on climate change. The council can use levers such as planning regeneration plans in parks and green spaces to apply place shaping for a greener future in your area. Carbon action is increasingly being written into policies and HCCSP is supporting officers and councillors to ask questions and explore collaborations between departments and authorities to share learning and best practice too. Engaging with the community where you meet them can help provide benefits to wider issues such as health inequality, air quality, healthy eating, better housing and employment and training potential too. Collaboration and normalising of the sustainability agenda can help other organisations follow the lead of the local authority. Which brings us back to HCCSP. We are the partnership body of the 11 district borough and county councils in Hertfordshire and the Hertfordshire Local Enterprise Partnership. HCCSP is a strategic group which acts as the lead partnership organisation for partners to collaborate and identify joint work programmes on environmental, climate change and wider sustainability issues. The Hertfordshire Climate Change and Sustainability Partnership. That's very long winded though, so we'll just go with HCCSP. Back in 2020, to help local authorities collaborate on their responses to climate action, members approved the first four action plans in 2021 and launched them in autumn 2021 in a virtual conference to county-wide stakeholders. We have six action plans which can be viewed on our website, outlining our priorities for action and detailed stakeholders and timelines for delivery. Behaviour change has been approved and will be launched to stakeholders in the autumn of 2022. Adaptation is still in development in consultation with client um, council officers. These have been approved by the member led HCCSP and the actions can be grouped into three categories. The first kind are actions to be delivered by council partners to make changes to their own assets, premises or services. HCCSP acts to help align these ambitions, saving officer time in researching, procuring and delivering low carbon or sustainable options, and then also collaborate on effective aligned reporting where possible. Actions requiring others to act in response to partners use of their regulatory powers. This is through licensing or planning, collaborating to ensure that sustainability is a thread that runs through regulatory powers. 
The final sort is actions which rely on encouraging, influencing or facilitating others to change, which of course is predominantly in relation to behaviour change, marketing and communication. To go through each action plan briefly in turn, many of the impacts of climate change will be felt first by nature. The biodiversity action plan brings impacts on the food supply chain, air quality and water preservation to the fore. In order to meet the national target of a net zero county by 2050, it's likely that some carbon offsetting through greening will be required, along with requirements via the Environment Bill to deliver biodiversity net gains for all new developments. There are significant opportunities to preserve and enhance the existing natural environment of the county, as well as to deliver new natural habitats. HCCSP is uniquely placed to coordinate and collaborate on a county-wide scale with officers and members across planning, parks and green spaces, highways, sustainability teams, licensing and more. Carbon reduction is of course central to approaches for tackling climate change and by identifying a collective carbon footprint, HCCSP can work collaboratively to reduce emissions and provide offsets for those that it is not possible to avoid. The partnership is working to achieve a consistent framework for partners to calculate carbon emissions and to monitor the carbon savings needed by 2050. HCCSP is developing initiatives to address carbon reduction and to agree targets for reducing emissions, the potential for joint initiatives working with businesses in the private sector will enable green growth and ensure successful delivery of our carbon reduction agenda. An HCCSP success of note is a solar bulk buy project which supports residents and businesses to collaboratively procure their own solar panels at a reduced rate. We have also launched an app with the Energy Saving Trust to help households understand where energy could be saved in their home. The biggest contributor to carbon emissions across the county arise from transport, which also has a significant impact on air quality. There are 33 air quality management areas due to road transport emissions in Hertfordshire. There is a national push to decarbonise the transport system, coupled with a wish to promote active travel, which would help reduce carbon emissions, improve air quality and benefit community health and well-being. Issues such as the rollout of electric vehicle infrastructure, transport policy and encouraging active travel are among those being addressed. Hertfordshire is in one of the driest regions of the country and our residents are among the highest water users nationally. The impacts of climate change on our water supply make it an even scarcer resource in the dry months, whilst flooding can be a serious issue during the wetter months. As well as water supply, there is the issue of wastewater and the need for suitable infrastructure to support growth across the county. Councils of Hertfordshire can collaborate to encourage residents and stakeholders to understand the importance of the streams and rivers in their environment, as well as the connection between water scarcity and their personal water habits at home. The Behaviour Change Action Plan is into consultation in the summer of 2022 and is due to be launched in the autumn of 2022. Behaviour change is the act of changing how people behave. And for the partnership, it is specifically about real world change to the core beliefs, actions and decisions for social and environmental improvement. This priority area has a central role to play in helping Hertfordshire on the journey to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Behaviour change is a method methodological, <laughs> systematic approach to engagement with individuals and communities to impact the range of factors that inform decisions that individuals make. HCCSP Behaviour Change Strategic Action Plan bring together proposed actions from the initial four action plans that have a behavioural aspect to allow HCCSP to develop targeted interventions for behaviour change using the COMB approach, which means ensuring that individuals have the capability, the opportunity and the motivation to deliver behaviour change. There is a vast breadth of community engagement and education, which will need to take place alongside policy and contextual changes to support these huge changes in behaviour. 
Regarding adaptation, humanity has breached the tipping points of a number of climate change impacts, including increases in the number and severity of flooding events, extreme heat events, and associated impacts on supply chain, council services, and health. The more we reduce emissions right now, the easier it will be to adapt to the changes we can no longer avoid, but we cannot control many of the impacts of climate change that will continue to impact our world and Hertfordshire in particular. Adaptation is a term that will be heard more and more frequently around local authorities and business. Identifying risks that climate change has on our everyday lives and then working to remove or reduce those risks to a manageable level. This will allow Hertfordshire residents to live well and accommodate climate change through adaptation and building resilience. HCCSP has formed a subgroup to clarify this subject, establishing a framework for a cross county risk register and a climate adaptation plan for Hertfordshire. Climate change is already having an impact on our goods and services, and we need to adapt we need to think and plan ahead to make sure that we are prepared. Will the buildings and infrastructure we're investing in be able to withstand the anticipated changes in temperature and weather patterns? Which areas of the district are at risk of flooding? What do we need to do to protect land, homes and businesses? What will the community need in order to adapt to the warmer summers? Will they need shading, seating, green spaces, respite? How can we improve and increase drainage to reduce flooding? Which council services might be affected? Which properties need to be adapted? Do we need to look at cooling, ventilation, flood risk? HCCSP has so far collaborated across the county to support delivery of a number of successful activities and the list continues. Successes so far include supporting residents to buy their own solar panels at a reduced rate from a vetted supplier. Transport opportunities include working towards consistency in policies relating to private hire vehicles and hackney carriages, consistent EV infrastructure rollout, and supporting a volunteer delivery of idling action for Clean Air Day. We have jointly commissioned and delivered a baseline for countywide biodiversity which will support understanding future activity. And we're working to embed collaboration between departments to ensure the excellent work happening at all levels of all councils is shared effectively within and between organizations. Partnership working continues as we develop relationships between the LEP and the councils, as well as the University of Hertfordshire and other key large employers across the county. To find out more about HCCSP, ask your sustainability officer to put you in touch with the team or search HCCSP online to read more about our action plans and updates. Thank you for your time and all best.